All right then, my friends, so this is going pretty swimmingly so far. We can sign up new users, and those new users now can see the guides, and they can also create new guides. But what I'd like to do is now introduce this idea of having some users as admins, and admins have special privileges, right? So what I'd like is that if you're a normal user, when you sign up, you can read the guides, but you can't create new guides. I'd like it so that only admins, a special user type, can create new guides. So we're going to have these two levels of authentication, normal users when they sign up and also admin users with the special privilege who can create guides. So how do we distinguish between the two types of user and allow admins this extra privilege? Well, to do that, we're going to use something called custom claims. All right then, so what are custom claims? Well, in a nutshell, claims are just extra bits of information that can be associated with a particular user. Now, we've already seen the basic properties of a user using Firebase Auth, things like the user ID, the email, or the display name, etc. But we can also store additional special properties via custom claims. An example would be an admin property, and that could be set to true, or a premium property for a paying user, that could be set to true. Now, it's not good practice just to attach any old information to users, like a biography, or what blogs they might have written on the website, Custom claims were not meant for that because remember this user token is sent back and forth in every request to Firebase that we make. Now, if we start storing tons of data on it, then it's not gonna be as efficient. So for any custom user data associated with a user, use the Firestore like we saw a couple of videos ago. But for any kind of user roles or permissions, we could use custom claims. So then the general idea is that we attach a custom claim to a user, for example, this admin one right here. Now then, when we send the user token back and forth from the client to the server and vice versa, we can access that claim both on the server and on the client. Now, we could use that claim to either protect the database dependent on the claim value, or we could update the UI on the front end dependent on that claim value as well. So for example, on the database, we could restrict write access to only users with an admin claim of true. And on the front end, we could show users with an admin claim of true a different UI. So they could do maybe different things on the front end. Now, when we're setting claims on a user, for example, making someone an admin, we don't want to do that from the front end. That is not going to be secure. We should set user claims on the server so that they cannot be manipulated. And for that reason, we're going to be using cloud functions. Now, cloud functions are a totally separate service provided by Google Firebase, and they're really cool. What they allow us to do is run functions on the server. And it's good for when we have code that we don't want to expose to the client in the browser and perform tasks that are not available to client users. Now, the good thing is, even though they're running on the server, we can call them from the front end. So if we want to make someone an admin from the front end, we could call this function. If we have the required credentials, then we're allowed to create that admin and attach that custom claim to the user in our cloud function. So in this video, what we're going to do is just have a look at how we can set up cloud functions locally. And then as we go forward, we're going to set up this cloud function to create a custom admin claim on a user. All right then, so to install the cloud functions locally, first of all, we're going to need the Firebase CLI tools. So to do that, make sure you say npm install Firebase hyphen tools, and you want to do that globally, hyphen G. I've already done that, but if you hit enter, that's going to install the Firebase tools onto your computer so that we can now use the Firebase CLI commands. So once that's installed, to initialize functions locally, first of all, and that's the way we do this, by the way, we initialize the functions locally and create them locally, then we deploy those functions to Firebase. So to initialize those functions locally, we say Firebase init functions like so, press enter. Okay, so it's gonna ask you maybe a couple of questions. Are you ready to proceed? I'm gonna say yes. And then first of all, we want to link it up with a particular project in our Firebase console. So the project I created was NN Game Guide. So we're linking it up with that project. So press enter. We're gonna use JavaScript, but you could use TypeScript as well. Do you want ESLint? I'm gonna say no for now. And do you want to install the dependencies with NPM now? These are all the dependencies that Firebase Functions needs. So press yes and press enter to install those. 
All right, cool. So that's installed now. And you're going to notice a few things down here. We have the Firebase source that just says which project we're connecting to. And we also have this Firebase.json, which is some extra configuration for our Firebase project. Now we also see at the top this functions folder. And in here we have the node modules. That's all the dependencies we installed. We have a package.json for those dependencies, etc. And we also have this index.js file. This is where we're going to create our cloud function and then deploy it. Now, in comments right here, it's already set up a simple function for us, but we're not going to use that. We're going to use our own callable function, and we're going to start that in the very next video.